Hi everybody, in this video, I'm gonna show you to connect your joystick to the quantum system. So let's get started. A joystick is an input device consisting of a stick that communicates in 2D. This is achieved by using two 10K potentiometers, one for the x-axis and another for the y-axis. These potentiometers are used as dual adjustable voltage dividers providing two axis analog inputs. The joystick also contains a switch which activates when you push down on the cap. Now let's take a look at the pins on the joystick. So there's a bunch of different types of GPIO joysticks out there. So when we do the pinout for this video, we'll be using the GPIO joystick that is provided in the component kit, which we sell on our website and also link in the video description below. So keep that in mind, we'll be doing the pinout for the joystick that we sell but yours may vary. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the pins on the joystick. The first one we have is the ground pin. So that one will go to a ground terminal on your builder base. So for the next pin, you'll see that it says plus five volts on your joystick. However, this is gonna be different on where we wire it to on the builder base. We'll actually be wiring the power to 3.3 volts on the builder base. The reason it says five volts on the joystick right now is because it's common for other platforms to use five volts. However, they're also making the transition to 3.3 volts. So make sure when you do wire this to our builder base, use 3.3 volts. Otherwise your analog inputs are going to be skewed and it won't work. So again, use 3.3 volts, not five volts. Now the next pin after that is your VRX pin and that controls the X axis potentiometer and then gives you the analog inputs for that and then you'll be plugging that into a GP terminal on the builder base. And the next pin is your VRY pin. This gives you the analog inputs for the potentiometer on your Y axis on the joystick, and this will also go into a GP terminal on the builder base. And the last pin is the SW pin. This pin gives you the digital data received by the push button on your joystick, and this will also be connected to a GP terminal on your builder base. Now that we have a better understanding of the joystick, let's go ahead and create our circuit. We'll be following this schematic here. All right, so here we go. Now we have our joystick here. Next, let's bring in our builder base right here. And then we're also going to need five male to female jumper wires here to connect the joystick to our builder base. First one we are going to connect is our ground pin. So we're gonna take a black male to female jumper wire, connect the female end to the ground pin, and then let's go ahead and connect that to a ground terminal on the builder base. Next, let's connect the power pin to the builder base. Remember, we're not connecting it to five volts, it's to 3.3 volts. So go ahead and take a red male to female jumper wire, connect that pin to the joystick, and then connect that to 3.3 volts on the builder base. And once you have done that, let's go ahead and connect the three remaining pins to the GP terminals on the builder base. I'm just going to rearrange a little bit. There we go. Now, this first one, let's go ahead and connect the VRX, which is your X-axis pin. And from here, I'm going to connect this to GP2 on the builder base, just because that's how I'm gonna lay it out. And then next, I'm gonna connect the VRY pin, which is your Y-axis, and I'm going to connect that to GP1 on the builder base. And then lastly, I'm going to connect our SW pin, which is the switch. And then I'm going to connect that to GP0. Just like that. Now that we've created our circuit, let's go ahead and power on our builder base. And then we're going to go to our Q server and then do the rest of the setup. All right, now that we're on the home screen of our Q server, let's go ahead and pair that builder base we just connected the joystick to. So to do that, go to the clients tab, select that, Go to the unpaired tab and you'll see the builder base id pop up go ahead and go to actions and then click pair once your client is paired go ahead and click the setup button and let's give it a name this one i'm just going to name joystick and then for location just pick a random location and then click save once our builder base is paired let's go ahead and create the firmware so go to the firmware tab then we're going to click create new and then we'll just name this one joystick and then click create and then now we're gonna add the hardware for it. So we're just going to need to add the joystick hardware. There we go. And then let's just give this one a name. We'll just name it joystick and then click add hardware. Now we have to do the configuration for that hardware file. Go ahead and click the drop down. 
and then for the driver, select GPIO. And then we're also doing the setup for just the x-axis currently. You can see it says one of three services here. We'll have to do all three before we can continue. But since we're doing the x-axis first, for the pin, we're going to select GP2 because that's where we connected the VRX pin to the builder base. So we'll select that. And then granularity, we'll keep it at 50. If you're not sure what granularity is, go ahead and just scroll over to the question mark here and then I'll tell you what it is. Now that we have the x-axis done, let's go ahead and do the next service. Now you can see here, this is going to be for the y-axis. So for the driver, we'll select GPIO. And then for the pin, we're going to select GP1 because that's the VRY pin that we connected to the builder base. And then granularity, again, we'll keep it at 50. And then now let's do the last service. This is going to be for the push button. Service type is digital in. For the driver, we're going to select GPIO again. For the pin, we'll select GP0. And then for the debounce, we're going to select enabled. And then for the pin mode, for this joystick, the way it's wired and the one we provide, it's actually an input pull up joystick. So we're going to have to select input pull up. If you don't choose input pull up, say if you put input pull down or floating, it's not necessarily going to work. So make sure you do input pull up. And then once you're done with that, click save. Now let's go ahead and go to the actions for that firmware file we just created and then select upload. And then for the client, we're going to select that joystick client and then select upload. Now while that's uploading, let's go ahead and create a simple demo application and to see how it works. So let's go ahead and go to the apps tab and then I'm just gonna quit out of the notifications real quick. All right, there we go. Click create new. Now I'm just going to name this joystick demo and then click create. So the first thing we wanna do now that we're on our app canvas is drag out the joystick hardware object. So go ahead and search for that and drag it out. There you go. And now you can see there are three ports on that object, one for the x-axis, one for the y-axis, and one for the button. So for this demo, we're just going to set up interface objects so we can read that data, and then we'll do a little bit more practical demo afterwards. But for this one, let's go ahead and bring out a couple text objects so we can read the x-axis and y-axis data. You can also use debug objects as well. However, this is a little bit more cleaner to read. So bring those in, and then for the button, I'm just going to bring in a interface switch so we can see that it toggles the interface switch object. So there we go. Now let's go ahead and give these interface objects a name so we can see better on the dashboard. So this one we'll just name x-axis, and then make sure to save properties. For this one we'll name y-axis, And then click Save Properties. And then last one, we'll just name Switch. Starting to label the Switch there. And then go ahead and click Save Properties. And then now let's go ahead and also name that hardware object for the mapping process. So we'll just name this Joystick. And then click Save Properties. Now that's done, we'll save our app. Go back to our apps list. So now let's go ahead and run this application. Click that play button. Now we're going to map the joystick to the joystick client with that hardware. There we go. Services are all aligned. Click done. And then now we can just do save and run. And then now we'll go to the dashboard. Go to that application. Now you can see the x-axis, the y-axis, and the switch are now giving us some data. These are the analog values for the x-axis and y-axis. Remember, since they're analog, they range from 0 to 4095. And then the switch is digital. Since it's pull up, it's, it's triggered on now. And when I push down on the button, it will turn off. So here's our joystick. Now when I start moving the joystick around, you'll see the data change. So if I go along the x-axis, you can see if I go all the way to the left, it gives us a value of 0. If I release it, it gives us a value of 2070. And then if I go all the way to the right, gives us a value of 4095, just like that. Right now for the y-axis, it will be the same thing. If I go all the way down on it, it will give us a value of 4095. If I release it, it gives a value of 2079, and then all the way forward is zero. So that's how you get the values for that. And then for the switch, it's pull up. So right now it's triggering high, but if I push down, it triggers low, high, low, high, low. There you go. 
So this is just a simple demo on how to read the data of the joystick and how it works. So now let's go ahead and create a more practical demo that you can use for your next project. So for this next demo, we'll be using our joystick to control the steerable car that's hooked up to the quantum system. It basically has two DC motors and a servo here that's all controlled by our builder base and then a motor servo driver board. This is gonna be a new DIY kit that we're gonna come out with in the next couple of months. So you're getting a little sneak peek of that right now. In the meantime, what you can do is just use an H bridge to control the two DC motors and then have the servo just hooked up to the builder base in a GP terminal. And you can do the same thing. I will have a video released on how to use this motor servo driver DIY kit to build a steerable wireless car like this in the future once we do sell this kit. In the meantime, again, you just use that H bridge. So let's go ahead and go back to our Q server and then create the app for it. Now that we're back on our Q server, go ahead and just stop the application from running. And then we're gonna go back to the app builder canvas by clicking edit. Now let's go ahead and add in the two motor hardware objects and the servo for the hardware on that car. Um, let's go ahead and just keep these interface objects so you can see the data change as we use it. I'm just gonna spread these out a little bit. There we go. All right, now we're going to need to bring in the two motor objects. There we go. Now I wanna be able to control the motors with the Y-axis potentiometer. So what I'll do is just take this and drag it to the joystick axle port on these motors, just like that. And then now I'll be bringing in a servo hardware object. Rearrange this a little bit. And now I want the X-axis to control that servo. However, I can't just drag it to the degrees port that won't work. What I need to do is bring in a manual ranging object. Let's go ahead and scroll out so I can rearrange it a little bit better so it looks cleaner. All right, now that we're a little bit rearranged here, let's go ahead and drag the x-axis port to the manual ranging value port, just like that. And what this object is going to do is range the x-axis values from zero to 4095 and then turn it into a range of zero and 180 for the servo because the servo only operates at zero to 180 degrees. So I'm just going to rearrange these lines a little bit. There we go. And then let's do the configuration for the manual ranging. So for the in minimum and the in maximum, we want it to be the analog value. So the in minimum will be zero. In maximum, we are gonna set as 4095 and then click save properties. And then the out minimum and out maximum, we want to be zero to 180. So the thing about my steerable car is the way they designed it, the servo is upside down. So the values are basically inverted. So in order to have it change in the correct direction based on that joystick, I'm going to have to put in 180 as the value for the out minimum and then click save properties. And then the out maximum, I'm going to keep as zero. Again, this will be different for you depending on the joystick and what car you're using. So just keep that in mind. You might have to play around with it when you build the car. So once you do that, just double check your values and then we're gonna have rounded as false. And then now we can drag that new value that that ranging object is creating and drag that to the servo, just like that. Now that's set up. We have basically everything we need to control that car. We're not gonna be using the button port to operate this. So let's go ahead and name these hardware objects now for the servo. We're just going to name it servo. And then for this motor, we are going to name this right motor. There we go. And then for this one, I'm going to name this left motor and then click save properties. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and save the application. So click save. We'll return to our apps. Then now let's go ahead and click that play button again. And then now we're going to map the hardware objects to the steerable car. Again, I have the firmware already uploaded to that builder base and all of that is set up. All I need to do is map it. So the steering car builder base with that servo, I'm gonna map it to that one. This one will connect to the right motor. And then this next one to the left motor. And once that's done, I'm gonna click save and run. And then we'll go to the dashboard so we can see that data as we use the car. 
There you go. Okay, now we have our steering car here. We have our joystick. I'll bring it into frame here. All right, so when I go left on the x-axis, you can see the servo turns the car to the left. You release it, it goes straight. All the way to the right, it turns right. Now if I go forward on the y-axis, you can see the car moves forward. All right, let's try that again. The nine volt battery provided way more power than I was expecting, so the thing flew off the table. There you go, everything's back together. I'm gonna just hold it up this time so you can see it. Now if I go forward, you can see the car is moving forward. And if I go backwards, you can see the car is going backwards. And you can also see the values change as I move the joystick. So that's pretty much how you connect and use a GPIO joystick with the Quantum system. Make sure you check out those links in the video description below for more information about the joystick and to see the other projects we've used it with. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.